Oh, where am I? What happened? There was no time for anything else. All I wanted was to get out of that dump pronto. Hey, you out there! Let me out of here, you dirtbags! Come on, who's out there? Hello? Nothing. So, this isn't gonna be easy after all. I started to take in my surroundings and bing, bang, boom. I was seeing salvation in every little thing that caught a glint. In my mind, they were already shaping into something that would definitely get these goons' attention. I was gonna do big, loud things with petty stuff. Like a poor country using scraps to send a rocket to the moon. I could use this. Pennies to pachyderms, I'll find something to fill it. Hmm, extremely powerful, huh? Sounds like a rocket of a time. Things are ramping up. I'm sorry, I... I can't do it. Not since the separation. I ain't putting on slippers unless I'm at home in my robe with a stiff drink, a Maurice Ventricool record, and a searing fear of the telephone. All right, let's get me some of this tar. Here we go. Now it's a little shallow pool of dense, extra sticky tar. All right, let's stick this in there. What the heck was I concocting here? It felt abstract, ridiculous, absurd even. The foundation of a really far-fetched and scatterbrained solution to my predicament. But this was a pretty ridiculous adventure already, so I guess I was just adapting. And a plank. This was officially ridiculous. Was I feeling proud of myself? A definite and resounding no, but it was all I had. Look at this. A cringeworthy blue ribbon taker in the crazy enough that it could work regional semifinals. Definitely not a highlight in my career. Assuredly not a low though. Maybe those late night Mac Viper and Mac and Cheese syndicated binges had some kind of effect on my person. Good old Mac and Cheese. All right, door. Brace for serious, imminent impact. Prisoner. The boss wants to see you. Come on out here. You have got to be kidding me. Mr. Katype. Or should I call you Don? No, you shouldn't. Katype will do just fine. We provided you with some slippers. Did Brother Gleam not assess your shoe size correctly? Now listen here, Buster. Unless I'm in the comfort of my own home, I don't do slippers. You can leave a man pantless, shirtless even. But don't mess with his footwear symmetry, you barbarian. What is this place and who are you anyway? This is about that damned book, isn't it? How deductive. Earning your keep, huh? Come now, don't take it personally, Katype. You were useful in leading us to it for a while, and then you were no more. We never really wanted to hurt you, or your shoes. You're sullen, grumpy, and mean to everyone. We like you. You would have gone far in our organization. Hmm, well, did you find the darn thing? As soon as the kidnapped troops got you out of there, our recon squad was dispatched to retrieve the volume. So you're really convinced you know its exact whereabouts, huh? Close to 100% certain. Ah, speak of the devil. All right, Brother Bright, was our information correct? Yes, Brother Starburst. So it's true! The Necronomicon really was hidden in the library? 
Kind of. Y yes your starriness. Well, don't just stand there, you fool! Let's see it! Well, we... we don't really have it. What?! A sigil was gone, broken into tiny little pieces, and something had clearly been hidden in there, but no book in sight. Kitaib? Everything was intact when I was in there, so don't put it on me, your grand poobah shininess. What about the librarian? It's a funny thing, we ran past each other when we were on our way to collect the tome. He looked so scared. <laughs> well, of course he looked scared. A bomb had just gone off. Anything else? Hmm, I don't think so. <gasps> oh, wait, yes. He was carrying a big book and didn't seem too happy about it either. Find me this librarian now! What about me? You don't need me anymore. Oh, just go back to your little cellar. Now let's be real here for a minute. What good am I to you now, cultist? He's right, Brother Starburst. He just chew into our rations, and he don't know anything either way. Oh, all right, just sacrifice him to the Haunter or something. Stop bothering me! Fine with me, boss. Walk, prisoner. Uh, I'm gonna need someone from rites and rituals down here ASAP. I'm about to do an R24-A. Come on, guys. You know the drill. Guys. Guys? Sheen? You out there? Anyone? Come on, you know I can't do Jack until we fill out the SNEF 187. We don't want any trouble with Code Union. We've been through this, people. Is anyone out there? Guys? Prisoners not in sacrificial robes, no ceremonial bucket for the collection. We're really running a shoddy operation here, no wonder EOD's kicking our derriers. I'm embarrassed. The prisoner's embarrassed. This is not looking good, brothers. Sheen? Flair? You guys totally bolted, didn't you? Starburst is not gonna be happy when he hears about this, people. This makes us look really, really bad. I almost feel like apologizing to the would-be victim. Hey, don't feel bad. It's not your fault. Yeah, well, it sort of is. It's our collective fault. I share in it. I take my responsibilities seriously. We're not a startup cult anymore. This is unacceptable. Your striving to be a better evil organization is commendable. Aw, thank you. It's nice to know that at least someone here appreciates it. Don't mention it. My dagger arm's falling asleep here, and I'm. Sweet dreams, star lover. Brother Gleam is sleeping off a particularly demanding day. Got a serious structural hazard over here. It's a heap of astronomy-related instruments. Wait, there's a piece of wire sticking out from it. I think I'd rather just pick it up. Looks like a hatch heading to an upper floor. It's an enticing ladder to some upper level. Hmm. Damn it, how'd I know it'd be locked? I think I can reach if I leap. I never thought I'd say this, but I don't think I'm heavy enough. Me or the stuff I'm lugging around. Huge, sturdy door. It's barricaded from the outside.
Barricaded from the other side. Makes sense that they'd shut me in here, but it seems that they don't think too highly of that Gleam guy either. All right, made a nice little sliding hook thing. Halfway there. There we go. One radical red-hot ram rocket ready to go. I'm a natural-born handyman. It's ready, steady, and aimed. Fire! I hope I've done you proud, Mac Viper. Whoa! That seemed to make a lot of things happen at once. All right, let's see now. October 13th. It's so hard to get accustomed to the sickening stench of this dreadful fishing town, but apparently it's important to him that we establish our base here, so we just take it. Decorating coming along nicely. No end to the work. A lot of long and boring entries follow. Seems like some kind of complicated records. Let me skip ahead a bit. Let's see. July 6th. We're all accustomed to the stench. It's probably imbued in everyone by now. Summon the haunter, and he came in a flickering form of a tall, swarthy man with skin made of ebony. Ignored my words and asked for the book, then disappeared upon my answer. We must find it, no matter what. July 13th. His incomplete form is frustrating. Must find the book. We must find it. That idiot Bright left the hatch open, and Lumen snuck up here into the summoning chamber to try to get the haunter's mark. What did the fool think would happen? We don't even bother storing their ashes in the urn anymore. Just leave them there as a reminder to anyone stupid enough to try that again. August 6th. Sister Halo's next copy proved to come in handy. Praise the haunter! I could scarcely believe my senses when at last she finalized the structure and Brothers Bright and Gleam dropped the cannonball on it. Not only did it not destroy what she built, but it lodged itself in the circular space above the stone and is exerting such pressure on the lattice work that you can take a shovel to it and it won't cave in. It's good to have some smart people join the ranks for a change. Only she and I know how to breach it and get to the stone, so that should at least keep our numbers from dropping. August 7th. Private investigator making waves in Darkham, looking for leads on the book. Might be a dark blessing in disguise. We just stay on his tail and track him to see if he digs up any leads. The book? The Necronomicon? Is that me they're talking about? August 13th. Rejoicing! It's very possible that the hostess's fetch dog has sniffed out the buck. Time to retire him and go for the prize ourselves. Hostess? Why did that sound familiar? Anyway, that crazily angled stone. I wanted it. If only to get back at these star-obsessed maniacs. I've opened it at its bookmark. The Stone from the Stars is a window on all time and space. It is within it that the Haunter sleeps while the yellow sun reigns, and it is from its circular gate that the Haunter's incomplete form rises when the words are spoken. Nor shall he ever rise in his true form until the Forbidden Book be by his side. No end to the work. I've opened it at its bookmark. It is known that touching the Stone from the Stars might cast upon a mortal being the mark of the Hunter. But none should do it unless prepared to face his cold black flames and turn to ashes and dust. No living soul can know whom the Haunter chooses to mark and grant vision beyond time and place. No end to the work. I've opened it at its bookmark. For the Butcher is the end of all, and the followers of him who lingers in the Night's Threshold must keep the Slaying One from ever setting eye or laying hand upon the book. The Butcher brings but... The rest is unreadable. The Butcher? Huh. That's new. Whoa! I don't think I can pry it out with my bare hands. Looks to be quite powerful. The dubious match-constructed security structure won't let me get my hands on it.
Inside the dusty drawer, there was one solitary rusty spoon. Unwritten private investigator wisdom says you never know when you could use a rusty spoon. I carefully placed the spoon in between the lens and the metal covering and... Voila! The lens was now mine. The lens is way too dirty to let any light pass through. Sweet. I most certainly did not burst into cold black flames. So much for this numbskull cult's credibility. It did feel, uh, weird. Weird. Alright, I'm now one cannonball heavier. Let's see what happens. That was a first. And a last. It's the crazily angled rock I lifted off these star heads. I hope I'm wrong, but I feel like it's somehow... Working on me. Damn. Let's get this stick, uh, sticky. Looks like a healthy crack at it might spell its doom. There's just one thing I want to say before I do it. Hammer time! 